Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all well. To my left I've got um Matt. So hello Matt. Hello, welcome to the Premier League. Okay. It has been a very long while coming for the Premier League, so I mean twenty three long years, so I bet you feel like a big kid on Christmas Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a large chunk of my life, even, which is saying something. So, uh, yeah, you wait that long and then it, then it comes along too quick in the end, almost. So, um, yeah, it's been funny, hasn't it, since Wembley? Um, sort of strangely long time since we've been back to the city ground, so it'll be nice to get back, back down there again at the weekend. Um, yeah, what's not to like since we last spoke? You know, promotion, lots of new signings, a few old friends gone missing and a few new ones made. Mm. Uh, exciting times. This is what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know it's all this little game since we last done a video together and a lot of us a lot of change, a lot of us happened and it's just very exciting times trying to get used to all the new play, players' names. Yeah, well, like I say, I don't bother even looking at them until they're actually signed and they're on the back of a shirt somewhere with uh, with our badge on the front. So yeah, I try not to not to look at any of that. Um, but yeah, there's been there's been a lot come in, and I'm more of a sentimentalist really with these things. I, I'm always sad to see the players we've had who've done well for us leave. And you know, last season we had everyone did well, so I'm sorry to see any any of the whole lot of them leave. Mm. So, um, but you know. They kind of have to. There's a lot that we're never going to get again. Um, didn't get many last year. So, you know, it's probably better for them and, and for the kids also. Having it go from 23 to 21, there was a lot of people that thought they're going to be playing youth football and there's suddenly not a team for them. So they've had to go out. Um, so there's been a lot of changes around the club, both uh, personnel, there's been sh shuffling of the management as well as the players. And also, um, you know, the infrastructure, a lot of things going on, a lot of things they had to do, didn't they, for the Premier League? Yeah. And I gather the old floodlights are going to come down at some point and all the LEDs are gone in and they're digging up half the pitch to put cables around it. And oof, God, down at the training ground, there's half of blinking, uh, I don't know, it's like uh, Kuwaiti Island or something down there. They're, where it's, it's Qatar where they build the islands. There's so much dirt going in, you wouldn't believe. Uh, I don't Clough didn't want to play football in the clouds, but I think with all the dirt going in, they will be up amongst the clouds if they're not careful. But um, they're doing a hell of a lot of work anyway. So, um, yeah, it's exciting times, really, and uh, a lot of changes, a lot of things people got to get used to quickly. Yeah, that's been... And we we, also, we, always, we always said last season that we are expected all these changes anyway with the known players and most of the swab that probably not up to standard, so we are we are expected to change. Which, really, I mean, what do you think of the new signings that came in at the minute? Anyone really excited here? Well, I think they're all good, really. I think it's hard to sort of have many concerns about any of them. Um, they're all young. They all seem to be sort of talented. They have all shown they they're, they're good footballers, and they seem to be the right sorts. I mean, you do wonder if some of them are a little bit more more or less Cooper's signings. Um, and whether some of them have been sort of foisted upon him. But I'd like to think that the signings we've made, we won't lose any money on. So, you know, in a way, it, we kind of haven't spent any money, I'd like to think. So, um, you know, stay up, go down, whatever. We'll get our money back. And we're just uh, using it wisely in the meantime. So, you know, aside from maybe Hendo's wages, which I don't think, I think are going into his bank account and aren't going to make their way back to Forest anytime soon. And a few other people, maybe Jesse Lingard's in the same respect. There won't be any sort of sell-on from him. Um, those are the only two things which are actually really definitely costing us money, I hope. Um, and they're being quite savvy about it. Um, but there's been a lot of changes, hasn't there? And, uh, and also, a lot of players have gone out on loan. A lot of the kids, uh, promising kids, have gone out on loan. Big seasons for them. Fauna, Will Swan... Um, Riley Harbottle, those kind of guys. Um, Backy as well. Um, so hopefully it's, it's, it's a good season for all of them. And, um, you know, assets appreciating, um, whether with us or elsewhere. So, you know, that's what Cooper did last year and that's what I hope he's going to do this year. And yeah, um, hopefully we'll see Garner come back at least if, if, if 
you know, the others haven't, he'll be one that will. So um, let's fingers crossed on that one. So I think he'd be a particularly good addition and something we still need. So um, I don't know. How many more do you think? I think there's going to be three to five, don't you? I've been saying no, and I've been saying the same to be fair. Um, to be fair, I'm expecting three to five. I think I'd probably another centre midfielder into to be fair. I think then it's just been that attacking area, like the uh, CM position. Then the um, probably an extra striker to be fair. Probably if we're going to look at semi mark now alone, which is. Uh, only a rumour. I'd like to see that sort of Winders um, area strengthen because we already got Brennan and Martin at the minute. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it looks like we're going to get, um, is it Dennis, this Watford guy? Yeah. Um, he looks on. Davis looks not so likely now. He's, he's off somewhere. It's Watford, isn't he? Mm. Um, which is a bit of a shame, you know. It's always a shame anyone has to go to Watford, but um, you know uh, that's a good move. It's that sort of number ten area. I think you know Lingard's the right kind of player. He hasn't mm. sort of he isn't fully fit yet, but he's an interesting player. And obviously Gibbs White is someone that Cooper really wants. So you know they're not going to go out and just buy people for the sake of it if they've still got him in their thoughts. Um, the Swiss guy looks like he's nailed on. Uh, Hopefully, Garner and maybe one other, like you mm. say, possibly a winger or or a fullback that can play. You know, because obviously we rely on the fullbacks to attack, so maybe win, wingers aren't quite so important. We've just got to figure out a way to play in the Premier League that works for us, don't we? Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of a complete culture shift from being like trying to get in the Premier League, trying to get in the Premier League, and now the team have to realise it's like a European Cup final every week mm. or a FA Cup final, or whatever you want to call it, and just treat them all the same and whether it's a you know a Monday night against you know uh, I don't know Bournemouth or whatever it's just the same as playing a, away at Anfield or whatever so um, they've just got to not get disheartened when they get beaten and figure out a way to play and put everything to, into every game and I think they'll do alright if they do but it's, mm. it's hard to to think of it like that isn't it it's, it's, yeah. it's disappointing when you lose and although Last week, there were lots of mitigating circumstances. You know, teams thrown together, basically never played together before. A team highly on form, away, first game of the season, incredible atmosphere. It's the worst possible scenario, really. We still could have drawn if a few things had gone right for us with a a bit of luck. It wasn't that bad. We played horribly. But it was kind of, you know... Hopefully, that's our worst performance of the season. And it's reasonable to, to suspect it, it will be because we'll have players added. They'll get to know each other more. They won't be overawed. I'd like to think that's going to be the worst performance of the season. And if it is, we'll do all right. Mm. And that's the thing as well. I, I've been saying that it took them two probably pieces of quality to lose. I mean, yeah, fair enough, they bombarded this, but they had to shows some quality to actually get past us because Endo was on his form and defensively, but the nerve nerves, they just didn't look like they were going to put any more than them two goals past us. No, I thought the defence passed, mm-hmm. you know, it got a pass mark, you know, it mm-hmm. wasn't outstanding. You wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't be writing home about, oh God, you know, we've got the greatest defence in the league, but they did okay. I think they held their own. It wasn't mm-hmm. flawless by any mm-hmm. means. But the problem was the balls out when it was just coming back. We just defended all, all the whole game, didn't we? So nothing really worked beyond that. And that was frustrating. Having said that, Sam had a header, which another day, if Lingard hadn't been around putting him off, um, at, trying to have a bite at it, he may have done better and scored that. You know, we could have... It could, it, look, we, we got well beaten, so there's no, you know, there's no sort of discussion about that. But you, every, a lot of teams will get beaten there. Some of the best teams in the league will get beaten there. So, if we're going to lose, if we're going to have a game when we're not not really ready or we're overawed or things don't work out, have those have those days against those teams where you were never going to probably get a point in any case if you can. So, you know, we're one point behind Liverpool still and we're level with Man U, aren't we? Sort of thing. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> <I'm> on... <laughs> that's a good start. 
<laughs> and we and we are on all on the same points of West Ham who we got on Sunday as well. I mean, Sunday mm. the atmosphere just be going to be electrifying. Like first same game of, of the season, everyone's going to be up for it. Um, on Sky as well, which is to annoying kick off time. Um, mm. But the atmosphere just going going to be electrifying. Yeah, I mean, obviously, everyone's waited for this for so long. It's it's going to be an amazing occasion. I hope we at least get a point out of it because I think it's important we can get a point or two on the board. These first four games are really tough. Mm-hmm. And then, then we have some easier ones coming up, which we do have to actually start winning. Um, so anything we can get now is kind of a bonus. And it's sort of, you know, we, we need to acclimatise during these first four games. Like I say... Newcastle, okay, you know, overall five out of ten at best sort of thing. It was all right. It's out of the way. This next game, I'd like to see we put in a decent performance because we haven't we haven't put on a bit of a show for a little while. Yeah, we, I'd, it'd be really nice to get a point or two or three. Yeah, I mean, it being regarded as a Jesse Lingard derby after all the yeah. shenanigans of yeah. it's transfer right. and. <laughs> he's triggered them a bit. Hopefully, he's, he'll score a goal. He's got a, a goal celebration up his sleeve to, to match uh, the occasion. But um, yeah, well, you know, being at Forest is a is a good place to be for anyone. It's a great opportunity for him. It's a great opportunity for someone like Hendo as well. Mm. You know, they want to play football, and um, most footballers would be quite happy working with Cooper. Forest is next to the top six is the big story in the Premier League. We're going to get looked at, aren't we? One way or another, we're going to be in the news. You know, that scrutiny might not always be uh, comfortable, but we're going to, we're going to be uh, the, one of the big stories this year, whatever happens, whether it's good or bad. Um, you know, I, I still think we'll do, we'll do well, but it's going to be hard with all these new signings. And this season... Yeah, let's 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 go for it every game. Let's see what we can do, and I still think we'll do pretty well. But it's going to be the next two or three years when all these players mature together, get to know each other. That's when we should expect to see something because it's new to all of them at the moment, mm-hmm. and they're they're generally all quite young and everything. So, you know, it's the beginning of another sort of cycle for us, which is a good thing. So, you know, this is the scrappy, ugly bit at the beginning of a cycle and we, we just need to survive. If we can do better, all the, all the better, but we'll see the benefits in the years to come. Two or three mm. years down the line, I'd like to think we'd be looking at the top half of the table and expecting it. Yeah, and they made in seven, first game, it, it, it was going to take two and three transfer windows to sort it out. So, and now we the sort of that order sort of dead wood from the years so that now we're going to start to see what we're really about. Yeah, it, it's a test. It's an acid test. It was a good job we jumped on, jumped on the sort of the Premier League gravy train when we did. I think if we missed the missed the missed the bus, to mix my metaphors, uh, another year or two, it would have got really really tricky. But um, you know, we, we've we've made it up there now. We want to stay up there now. I I just hope there's patience. You know, if we don't win, a, if we don't score a goal, we don't win a game all season. We know Cooper's a good manager, and nothing should detract from that. He should have t- two years, regardless, to do, to do what he likes. Because it, it would, it's going to be a mistake to ever get rid of a manager of his caliber. So you mm. stick with him, regardless of results. If it's difficult, it's difficult. It is what it is. Um, if you wanted easy games, you stay in the championship. You could win quite a few down there, but this is going to be tough. So let's just accept it and let's stick with them and um, just take every game, the games one at a time as the cliche goes. Mm, definitely. Um, what sort of team are you expecting us to um, go against West Ham? Because we all, we all know, um, we said it a lot of times, people like to keep the same team, keep a settled back, three or five, as we call it. Um, yeah. Say. Well, it's only really the the two question marks. Well, I guess the three question marks. Well, kind of two, I think probably. It's Sam up front or a one year, 
and um, Niakate or Cook, really. And in both cases, there's an injury aspect to it, so we're not quite sure. I think in retrospect, I personally would have picked Musa probably at the back, and I thought he had one of the better games um, last weekend. Um, but I think Cooper would have picked Cook, all things being equal, for his experience and so forth. So I don't know. I think that one's a kind of 50-50, and I think both of them are good and capable so um, six and one half dozen the other, and up front it's it's Sam who's coming back to fitness, who I think Cooper seems to trust and like, or um, Mister Awanye, isn't it? So um, I don't know. I, this year, I think for us though, it's a it's a squad squad game, and I think we're going to have to work hard and we're going to have to use our substitutes wisely. So I think the, the the sort of three, four, five substitutes we have are going to be almost more important than the people that get picked to start the game because either we're going to be clinging on or we're going to be chasing the game. Um, you know, it's the games are going to be difficult. You know, the changes we make are going to have a significant impact on the results. So I think, you know, it's a squad game more than ever for us um, with the squad we have already and especially if we had two or three more players. So I think that's it. And it's the likes of, you know, Colback, can he play every game? Mangala, is he good enough to come in instead of one of those? Do we add more players in the midfield? We might have this Swiss guy they're saying come in. I don't yeah. know. And then obviously at left back, Toffolo probably hasn't been brought in as the first pick, um, but he's doing okay at the moment. So I don't know. They seem to the suggestion that Richards with his broken leg might be bombed out and he might be looking for someone else. I think the Swiss guy can play left back, can't he? As well. I so don't we know much about him. No, he's very good though. I mean, that's the encouraging thing. Nearly all the guys we've even been talked about with, people have liked them. There haven't been too many duds where people have been pulling their hair out. And the Lingard thing to me, to start with, I wasn't that keen on the whole suggestion. It didn't seem to fit. But if you take it in isolation, I think it's a, it's a smart move and it's it's kind of interesting. And it almost is like a sort of lightning rod. It takes away a little bit of the pressure on all the other players a little bit because he's obviously the one that everyone's going to focus on, you know, good, good, bad or indifferent. Um, his form's going to be particularly, you know, top of the agenda whenever for his play. Um, I don't think he's fit and I think he, he'll do well. And it was... It was kind of frustrating because I think the kind of player he is actually is the kind of player we've really been crying out for all the last yeah. season. So if he can find his form and you know click with the rest of the team, I think we'll get you know an exponential amount from him. So it could be a, a win-win. And the same with Henderson. I think playing for us, he's not going to be sitting around. You know, he's going to have to save to make. So it's a great opportunity for him to show how good he is because there's no doubt he's he's good enough to be a top six kind of goalkeeper um, and it, it, you know he'll get to show that hopefully in the right way yeah that's the thing that's, um, that Anderson will get to prove what he is about and for Lingard as well we he, he will have, I mean he proved that he can't play in the Premier League and mm. I mean for him to come to us but yeah fair enough not on the wages that West Ham and also most were going to pay him he's, Looking at you coming to pay, be a part of the project and want to play football, which he never got at Man United. It and if we went to West Ham, we might not get that game time where he will get no, in here. No. You know. It's it's a great platform for both of them. So mm. I think you've got to look at it and say, you know, the money was incidental. I think I think often people, you know, obviously they're professional footballers; they want to get paid something, you know, decent. But it's surprising. I think people underestimate how much playing football means to them and the money takes care of itself, doesn't it? If he comes here and plays well, look, we're going to have to pay him even more money next year to keep him, if you want to keep him, and or someone else will. And um, I think that's the way it's going these days. People, you know, a lot of footballers, you're going to see they're going to run their contracts down and just get ridiculous, stupid wages. But in, in, a, in a perverse way, that's, all, that's, that's kind of better because they're going to be paid on merit, aren't they? Um, yeah. If no one wants them, they're going to get nothing, um, or relatively nothing, or not near to what they want him. They will have wished they just signed a cushy uh, five-year contract on on something when they were under contract and viewed as an asset by their club. 
But once they're out of contract, they're a free agent and it's purely on merit what anyone wants to pay them. So, you, you know, I, th- I think both those two want to play football. Uh, you know, obviously Henderson said what he said about Man U and kind of wasting a year of his career. He's got time to, to make up. And I think that's it's refreshing. I mean, it's not what Man U fans want to hear, but it's exactly what Forest fans want to hear. That he's here for, you know, the right reason. He's ambitious and he backs himself. Mm. Yeah, definitely. It is quite good for him to say that about his career and that. I mean, it reminds me a little bit of Cluffy Days with what Henderson did. Like, it's not the yeah. high kind of... <laughs> what, the hiding away from the new manager yeah. so he can get, get... Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, like I say, I, I, th- I think people think these days people just want to sign big fat contracts. And there are players like that, obviously, where they just sign the contract and put their feet up and play, you know, video games for the next so many years and just count their money. Fine, but... Ultimately, I think they're all competitors. If they never get close to pulling, becoming a professional footballer at any level, um, they're competitive individuals. They want to play football. They want to win. They want to be successful. And they enjoy playing football, apart from anything else. You can't buy that. They can have all the money in the world. They can't buy to play for a, a team in the Premier League. It's hard. It's hard to get picked. Now we're looking at it. All those t- players that got us promoted, a lot of them aren't playing in the Premier League and they thought they'd earn the right. It's, it's a cruel game, isn't it? You know, and there'll be some of our squad this year that think they're going to be playing. You know, I thought actually another good thing this week was Richie Lavea. You know, he came along and he thought, oh, I'm going to be playing. I'm involved in the championship. Of course, it, you know, it's not going to be easy when you're behind Jed Spence. But he hardly played, but he enjoyed his time. He's gone off back to Toronto and he's only had good things to say about the club, which I thought was, you know, wonderful to see that he wasn't sort of bitter about it but I think he's still an ambitious player now you know hopefully he does well work for, for himself whether it's there or here or, or somewhere else but um, yeah you know it's hard to play in the Premier League they can get paid all the money they want but but you can't buy to play in the Premier League it's priceless so it's incidental and, and whether it's Henderson whether it's Lingard whether it's Joe Wall whether it's Ryan Yates they all want to play in the Premier League regardless of the wages. They're not all paid the same, but, you know, the ones that play, that's that's the reward in itself almost. Yeah. And good thing about that, you, Luria and OJ, they've gone out, they've gone out on loan, they would get that regular football now that they probably didn't want to got with the players being in form. And they will come back, they'll probably get that confidence back and they probably will, unless they want to stay where they are, they, if they come back, they'd be like, Wanting to um, prove that, yeah, I'm better than I was when I was here five, six months ago. So, and even with the other players that gone out on loan, the younger players, mm. that will just inspire them more to improve. Yeah, there's no point letting people rot. Now, I like that. It, it's it's harsh, you know. We've sold players. That I kind of wish we hadn't sold, but and we've loaned these people out. But you've got to just view it as a positive thing. Look what happened to Brennan. You know, it's a great opportunity. Fauna, uh, well, all of them, basically. Let's not list them all over again. But especially a player like Torres Fauna, he needs to play and to actually prove what he can do. He's not the kind of guy he can chuck into a team and have a punt on and, and hope it works. You need, he needs to be able to show what he can do. I heard a lot of positive things about him. Apparently, he went off to the um, some England camps and, you know, top brass at England were really impressed with him. I've always thought he's a fantastic player, but he's not the kind of... You, you, the Premier League is such a highly competitive place. Mm. It's hard for anyone to get a kick. Um, so you know you have to go and get seasoned, tried and tested. It's going to be tough for them. Look at look at Brennan. You know he's player of the season last year. He's done everything you can ever do. But it's a whole new test now, yeah. the Premier League at this level. And I, it's not that I don't think he'll be able to do it. Of course he can. He can, he can totally smash it. But it's another hurdle, isn't it? It's a, it's, it's a higher hurdle. And some of them it will suit and some of them it won't. And there's only one way to find out. Yeah, but yeah, definitely. they're all they're going out and playing football. There's no substitute for that. You know, like I say, it's nice that Henderson and Lingard are coming to play for us for that opportunity. And that some of our fringe players last year have gone out and done it in another way. That's fine because they weren't going to play in the Premier League. It would have been a waste of time them sitting around and watching every week. Yeah, definitely. I couldn't agree more to be fair. 
what's mm. your, your prediction for West Ham? Well, let's be realistic. I, let's say one one. Let's be, let's be kind of realistic. Yeah, we just don't know, do we? I mean, going out yeah. last week, we you know, in your head you think, well, we, yeah, we can win. You can kind of imagine yourself winning. You can imagine yourself getting thumped. You could. I thought we'd probably scrape a draw last week with a bit of luck. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't uh, realistically a draw. We can win. I don't know. You know, I really don't know. It'll be another test, won't it? It's completely yeah. different. How much will Cooper have done this week? How much, what will have done to their heads last weekend? Are they all, you know, going to come back sort of... The thing last year, which I thought was really good, we had the odd game where we played badly, quite randomly, didn't we? Um, mm. Even despite all that success. But usually we came back with a really strong reaction. So... Hopefully we see that because if we do, I think it'd be a good sign that, that that sort of togetherness and that team spirit that we had last year, and we had to kind of now recreate from scraps all these different players that don't know each other's names yet. Mm. If we sh- see a reaction, that'll be a really good indicator that Cooper's on the top of his game and he's got he's managed to pull another one out of them like he always used to. So, uh, you know, I'm confident. Um, I remain confident, and I, so let's let's say a draw, but let's hope for a win. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. To be fair, um, and that's a good thing as well with Cooper because he'd been here last year, and you have to get that togetherness and that team spirit from a new team. So he's got to do it again this year. And Coop, we said it loads last season that he had to think on his feet. So I think it, we will get us one reaction. I think. The atmosphere on Sunday is going to be something else. And I think it's just going to be brilliant Sunday. And I think a draw will be a good result. I think if we win, it'd be better. But get, getting after Martin, getting the point will be massive. Yeah, we need to win some games. We need to win the odd game we're not really kind of expected to win on form. It'd be nice to get a couple of them in the bag early in the season rather than play catch-up. You know, so... Any points we get from these first four games will be kind of bonus points. Not that we should get none and we stand no chance, but we should kind of, if we can get like a win and a, a draw, a couple of draws or something like that, be fantastic. There, there'll be absolute big bonus for us. So, um, yeah, let's hope for a win. I mean, uh, all these sort of things where people say, let's finish, you know, I'll take 17th now and stuff. I don't know. I'd rather go for every game, you know, Balls out like a Viking, kind of trying to win every single game you know, on its merit, sort of thing, and um, just see where we end up. You know, yeah. that's what it's all about, isn't it? Really, the competition. So let's go and try and beat them. And if we can't, fair enough. And if we can, all well and good. Definitely, couldn't agree more with that. Um... But it's going to be a big occasion, and I just hope you know if, if we don't get the result, that we all stick with them, and, and this and the next home games. Just as big occasion because everyone is a big occasion. Mm. Oh, it will be. It will be a, a cup final every game now. So, um, and I think it's it, a spicy one to start, isn't it? As well yeah. with the Lingard thing, you couldn't have written, written the script much better. So, uh, it's it's a tough one. Again, it's it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Because if we'd had an easy one, well, I say an easy one. If we'd had one of the ones you you had to win, it would be worse. I think it'd be more more pressure. This one is one of those ones you take a draw. At the beginning of the season, you'd say, yeah, we can get a draw. So a draw would be a par result, really. So, you know, anything above that would make up, you know, put us ahead of the game over the two games, I think. So if we get a draw, we're doing okay. I couldn't agree more with that one. Um, I'd like to say thank you for Matt for coming on. Thanks, Dan. Um, do check out Matt on um, the social week. Forest fan base, I've got the um, its own very gallery as well, so do check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm still doing all that for my sins. I need them to start scoring some goals and things like this, rather than just wearing their, putting the shirts on and getting the sponsors sorted out. But we, we'll get there. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I like to so thank you for watching. Guys.